All right, let's go. <laughs> hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. We are back with part two of our first video. I was like, there's no way I could cram all of those topics with the other shenanigans we had going on in that video. But if you did not check it out, please make sure you go watch that video. And to everyone watching, we want a thousand likes on this video as well. And for you guys to share this video to your Insta story, your Insta snap, whatever you share our stuff, you know, tag us. Also, make sure that you are caught up on the Scorpion Show podcast. We got a new podcast coming later this week. And something I forgot to do in the last video, <coughs> excuse me, I forgot to thank, forgot to thank those who sent me monetary gifts via Cash <coughs> App because I was able to get what we needed I'm for our podcast. And I want to thank uh, two people. Well, you know, I started um, my birthday donation because you know it's coming up on the twelfth. But I said in one of our previous videos I was going to start on the 1st mm -hmm. leading up to the 12th so I posted it yes on the 1st and I got to post it again today um, so you can send me monetary gifts you know on my Venmo that's what it's called Venmo mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Venmo and Cash App I will post it on Instagram if you um, if you follow me I will post it, it post it on there so you should look out for that um, but two people had sent me gifts like a week ago and mm -hmm. one of the guys said that he had sent you a gift. You sent me yeah. a nice large gift. Right. I was, yeah. I was, like, I was wow. like, wow, like that was really mm -hmm. nice. Like so, yeah. yeah. But I've been entertaining y'all all year. Okay, right. On my Instagram, okay. A lot of y'all been getting laughs upon laughs upon laughs. It's my birthday week, okay. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> you can send anything you'd like, okay. And I'm accepting gifts all week, okay. All so, right. so yeah, I was able to get, I was able to get the recorder. Um, when I had the Amazon wish list, I still have an Amazon wish list, but I don't think nobody's going to get on this money. But if they do, it would be for Christmas, and it would shock the hell out of me. But I was able to get the recorder. I was able to get the cord for the um, recorder. Mm -hmm. um, I sent Mikkel to Rite Aid today so he could get the piece where we can finally do uh, interviews for the podcast. So whoever y'all would like for 2020 to come on the Scorpion Show podcast, Please, please drop the names down below so we can get in contact with their people. Like, I'm really looking forward and to, like, getting more guests on our show. Because we haven't had a guest on our show in over a year and a half. Well, we had a guest, but we didn't really have a guest on our show in a year and a half. And that was with Lena Waithe. And um, I don't know how the, um, the how it premiered, um, like, money-wise, but a lot of people have been hitting me up to talk about um, it just Queen and Slim. Mm -hmm. A lot of people hit me up talking about it. Some like it, some don't. Some hated the ending. Mm -hmm. Well, I you think know, we all hated it yeah. because of how it turned out. Like it yeah. was really, really dramatic. Yeah, but what, what they, you know, what they really hated about the ending was this. Yeah, but but that is life, right? And you know what? Somebody made a really good point. Can I just say? Can I just post say this? Keep talking, and I'm gonna. Yeah. So, so some people didn't like the end of it, but I don't want to spoil it, spoil it for y'all because I want to give y'all a chance to mm -hmm. see the film. But once I feel like I'm giving y'all one more week and then we can talk about it, um, talk about Queen and Slim. But it was just, I was just surprised that this person felt like this. I mean, they were going off and I was like, listen, let's go to the DMs and talk about this because I don't want to, you know, spoil it. But I said, I'm definitely going to share your opinion with Lena because she wants to hear the good and the bad. In the bad, right. She wants to hear the good and the bad. So going to make sure that she gets that um, that uh, DM that, that was sent to me. And then, you know, my friends, they were texting me and Brandon telling me I sat in that theater and cried for ten minutes. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even get up. So it was it was it was really, it was a journey. It was really good though. Um, um this is what a young lady left a comment on my page under one of my Queen and Slim posts. And I even tagged Lena in it too. And I said, she said, um, she loved the movie. She said, I loved how every person who helped them taught the audience a lesson. From not all black cops are bad, kids are impressionable, not all white people are bad, and not all skin folk are is kin folk. And I said, that is so true. Because when you saw, I didn't think about it at the time, but when she said that, and I started processing the film, I said, that's true. Because people that you wouldn't expect to help them, Helped, right. and the people that you thought would help them didn't yeah. help. Yeah. <laughs> and then would it all come all come down to that mighty dollar? Well, you tell them the film. Well, <laughs> no, I'm not actually telling the film. 
No, I'm not talking about film. Don't make me feel bad. But you know what I mean. Listen, this is after the weekend. They should see me already. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? But I'm just saying. That's, right. You know, that dollar is powerful. Right. You know. And, sure and, and I remember it was one scene where these people, somebody said to these people, listen, it's this for y'all if y'all tell us. And they said, nope, we're not telling y'all. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, how many of us would be able to do that? Cause that was a lot of money, right? But they said no, we're not doing that. <laughs> that movie, it was, it was, it was really, it was really amazing. It was, and a it might not be the movie. outcome that a lot of people wanted, <laughs> but it's it's a film that you should definitely watch. And and I think that's probably going to be. Oh, but I didn't tell you yet. There will be there will be a year end video with myself, Mikael, Dennis, Diggy. Did I say Ernest? I think you said him earlier. Yeah. But Me, is he going Mikhail, to do that? Dickie, <coughs> Ernest, Ernest. I'm thinking about getting Eddie. And there's going to be six of us, and we're going to talk about this year, 2019. We'll probably have some random stuff about, you know, our favorite moments from the decade and all of that. But that's going to be our final video for 2019. Um, so anything before these, the, the third week of December, it probably won't make the video but I'm really really excited because all of us are going to get together <coughs> and we're going to do this video so I'm excited so I'm letting you guys know now that's the plan I thought about it today everybody's on board I couldn't believe everybody was on board everybody's schedules worked out so we're going to do it so yeah um, let's get into this video let's talk about Gabrielle Union and you know be getting fired from America's Got Talent which is a show on NBC is ran by Simon Cowell's um, team and things like that. B. Scott broke the news that Gabrielle Union got fired from the show. Now we did talk about it last week, but we didn't go in depth. Now they were saying there was ra racism, homophobia, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, sending messages to Gabrielle saying that her hairstyles were too black. Um, she's, she made some complaints about Jay Leno. Jay um, Leno? making a racist joke. It didn't make oh. the show, but you know, he okay. still said it and thought it was okay to say. Right. Like, basically she I didn't was even know he was still doing stuff. I thought yeah. he was retired and just sitting enjoying his money. He was you know, he was somebody <clears throat> you know, it, it was just a lot of negative things going on and she complained about them. Like Simon Cowell smokes and I guess like their their wherever they're getting dressed at Wherever he smokes from, he's not supposed to be smoking these buildings because a lot of buildings have clothes where you're not supposed to smoke in. Mm -hmm. He would smoke anyway, and she's allergic to smoke. Mm -hmm. It was just a bunch of things that she had to deal with. Really haven't heard anything about Julianne Huff. And, um, you know, uh, uh, what's her name? It's, it's a, she has some celebrities come out to her defense and mm -hmm. in, in defense of her. I know uh, the, um, <coughs> what? I can't the young lady from Grey's Anatomy. Ellen Pompeo, yeah, she yeah. spoke up and said something. Ariana Grande said something. Um, even Dwayne Wade tweeted out. So now NBC, like not, now the ship is called Wildfire. The View, they yeah. talked about it today. Oh, I missed it. But mm -hmm. what did they say? They talked about how you know it wasn't right. You know, Sonny and Megan were you know they all were basically in agreement with her. But yeah. Sonny and Megan, I just remember them. Oh, and they had Yvette Nicole. What is her name? Yvette Nicole. Brown. She was on there, so they all were in. Everybody was in agreement, but I just remember Yvette, Sonny, and Megan were really vocal, going, going yeah. like you know, it was wrong for what they did. Yeah, and they, you know, it's, it's basically a lot of sexist things going on. Mm -hmm. Like they get rid of the women so they could bring in the higher, younger women. And um, what's his name? Howard Stern. He was complaining, not complaining, but he was talking about that on his radio show. About how many things been on. He said you could be the ugliest man and you can still have this job, mm -hmm. but they want the women to, you know, they want their women to look a certain way mm -hmm. and to get younger at the, you know, a certain amount. Because Tyra Banks left, Heidi Klum left, and Mel B left all in the same season, um, and then they brought on Terry Crews. I haven't heard anything from Terry Crews yet, but I would love to hear his opinion about what's been going on because he's been working there. He's and he does a good job. Him and Gabrielle Union, everybody. Like, I didn't watch the whole show, but I watched the audition rounds, and everybody, like, it, this was a good and show. That's what Megan was saying, too, in the view. Megan was basically saying, if you watch Gabrielle's social media, she's probably the one judge that is the most um, active with 
viewers and just she's that one judge on that show that right. you know she brings a lot of attention to the show so why would you get rid of somebody yeah. like that it just doesn't make sense and it just was it yeah. was crazy 12 million dollars they like <coughs> Gabrielle Union is not willing to just walk away from 12 right. million dollars right. who wants to walk away from 12 million dollars not me I don't want to walk you away know? from 12 dollars but, but with all that going on she still was willing to stay and then they told her that you know we don't even need you anymore her and Julianne Huff <laughs> They're not on the show. And Javi Mandel and Simon have been there since day one. Yeah, from the beginning. And I don't even know if Simon was there like when the show first started, but I believe Howard Howie was definitely one of the um originals. Originals on the show. Um and then like what else they were saying? It, it, it's, it's a lot more. NBC was saying that, oh, we're gonna we're meeting with Gabrielle Union to discuss what she wanted to discuss. No, no. Gabrielle sued the shit right. out of them. <clears throat> they don't want they, yeah, don't, they, they don't, don't want, want their problem. Before. Yeah, they don't want their problem. Yeah. Now, M no, NBC meet with like, them, but still sue yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> meet with them, but still sue it, them. It's too much going on. Like I don't know if she's gonna get a show out of this, like I don't know. But NBC, they got a lot going on behind the scenes. Like y'all killing Joyce news said, stories. That's what Joyce said too. Joyce said y'all killing news stories. stories. Matt Lauer. Um, yeah, Matt Lauer, Harvey Weinstein, and Cur and Curry with right. her. Yeah, this show, like y'all kind of like I don't know. Y'all yeah, talking about see. Donald Trump? Right. Y'all got your own stuff. Okay. <laughs> You know, and it's just not fair. And then Simon Kyle's said, yeah, we're willing to meet. No, it's not we're willing to meet. It's when y'all going to be willing to meet in court. Right. Because y'all going to pay her. Right. For what y'all did to her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just crazy. And I'm glad that she got white women on board talking about Because not a lot of black women say anything anyway. And I'm talking about as far as the celebrities. I really haven't heard anything. Well, a lot of them probably but don't once watch Ellen Pompeo, Yeah, once Ellen Pompeo like got said something, all them girls started mm -hmm. tweeting out. And it started a movement, but that's because a lot of them know what's really going on behind the scenes over there at NBC. Yeah, yeah. But I, I did see one thing about girls like doing like the black hair challenge and stuff like that. I did see that, so I'm gonna take that back about the black girls. I did see that they were doing the black hair challenge because they were talking about her hairstyles are too black. And something I noticed is that Joy Reid, shout out to Joy Reid because her hair be done and like you know African American hairstyles, and I like seeing that. Cause you don't see no black women on the news with hair like how Joy's hair, like braided up or mm -hmm. held up, and all kinds of. You don't see that mm -hmm. cause everybody gotta have long straight hair. Mm -hmm. So shout out to uh, Joy uh, Joy Reid. NBC getting something right somewhere, or maybe that's MSNBC. Cause I heard they're two different entities. So yeah. Yeah, well, I think so. <laughs> yeah, cause um, what's her name? Rachel Maddow got NBC together um, a couple weeks ago. About them women having gag orders, um, like why are y'all gagging women and speak from speaking out about what happened with them being sexually assaulted? So now NBC saying, you know, we're gonna we're we're lifting that up and they can say whatever they want to say. We shouldn't have that, that on in the first yeah, place. Because that guy, what's his name? The one? Mello. No. What's the one? Is Ronan Farrell? Mm -hmm. Oh, he's getting all the girls. Yes, he is. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he is just he's spilling all the tea. Ah! And they're all running to him. And every time they run to him, the view calls him up. <laughs> come on, come talk. And they gave him a whole half an hour segment. And I just be looking and watching. <coughs> so yeah, and so you can't stand uh to, 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 uh is Willie Allen his father or stepfather? I don't know. I think Mer Mia Farrow is his mother. So well, well, Mia is yeah, his mother, yeah. but I don't know if Woody is his father. But I know he 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 sides with his sister because you know his sister had accused Woody of you know. Oh. Stuff, yeah. Because mm -hmm. he talked about that the last time he was on the view. Mm. Yeah, this is something else. What yeah, but once they, once he gets a story, it catches like wildfire. And he was trying to put these stories from the people from NBC in the book, and he couldn't because they were gagged. Right. So that's why, you know, Rachel Maddow said something, and that then was, she still had um, Ron Farrell on her show, mm -hmm. and commended him for what he was doing. That was the last thing he <laughs> said when the last time he was on the view about how a lot of people on NBC were under gag orders. Yeah. So it was ridiculous. NBC, y'all gotta get it together. Remy Ma has escaped the charges <laughs> of beating that lo her loving hip hop castmate up. They said they're not gonna press charge. I mean, they're not gonna go through with it because they couldn't prove beyond a reasonable doubt that Remy Ma did those things to that girl. Even though we know she did. Yeah, even though we know she did. Now I, I think <laughs> you, that she is blessed. Have to prove. Yes. <laughs> even though I know you did, but you have to prove. That's Remy, thank God because. We don't need you behind bars and violating your parole and all this and that. I don't care how it went down, why it went down. 
But I just feel like that girl, you, that girl was petty for even going to the cops. You know she done been through a lot. Her son ain't see her. You know, that's some shit you and say, you know what, I'm going to fuck you up somewhere. But you know, you Remy got to sit down. Fight. Remy got to sit down. And chill. Yeah, chill. And she need to get her career together, too. Bamboos like, needs to, um... Pep, 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 pep. You call him Bamboo. <laughs> Papoose put a hold on his wife and say, yeah. chill. Yeah, she got to chill because she's rough around the edges. She's but rough. I love Remy. She's rough, rough. And I love her. You know, one thing I love about Remy is her voice. Like, I love her speaking voice. She's I love Remy. Man. I love Remy, yes, a little bit. But I love it, though. It's so you, Remy. You love the way a man speaks. Mm. I like the way Remy speaks. <laughs> Like a man. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a deep voice. Like a man. I like how deep voice. You know, I, do. I just do. But shout out to Remy, cause you got no charges. You beat the charges. Now you gotta get your rent album together. Like I really want y'all to get it together for 2020. Mm. I want Hardy <coughs> to get it together. I want Missy to get it together. Missy, you can't be releasing six songs no more. But I liked that they was cute. But come on, I want her to come back. I want Lil Kim to. Get it together, no more auto tuning. I want all the girls to like get their shit together. I want just want y'all to get it together, mm -hmm. and you know, bring that fire, cause it it ain't no fun with just Cardi and Nicki sitting at the top. Like y'all gotta do some stuff. <clears throat> like, come on now, <clears throat> come on, get it together. Jill Scott is taking her album Words and Sounds Volume One. Who is Jill Scott? She's taking it on tour for the 20th anniversary. Now I'm mad because the first rollout, Philly is not nowhere to be seen. But she, she should be in New York, Radio City Music Hall. Y'all can check the dates. But that's a large venue. Yes, six thousand people. That's a large venue. For she her. could do. I could, I think she could sell <coughs> it out. She could sell it out. No, and I don't think she can't. No, I don't think she can't. But I'm just saying. First of all, Radio City Music Hall is large and it's an mm -hmm. iconic building. Yes. Building. So to have years, wow. Yes, I'm 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 excited for her. First of all, that album 20 years ago put her on the map. Mm -hmm. it, it put Philadelphia on the map mm -hmm. because we had a couple of soul singers come out from that. Uh, Jill Jaguar Wright, uh, Vivian Green, Music Soul Child, Flowetry. Mm -hmm. Like everybody was trying to find out what was going on in Philly. Mm -hmm. We had that R&B little thing on lock. Yeah, the roots. <laughs> What that was called the Neo Soul at the time. Mm -hmm. We had that shit on lock. Hey, Ellen Bell. No, she don't. Like <laughs> yelling at. But Dion, don't work. <laughs> you do that. Dion was talking about something. Talking about Patty was off key when they was a, when they had that super group. She was like me and uh, me and Gladys at the time. You gotta bring them notes to down a notch, you know. Just she really said that. Oh, yes, on, this is an interview. No, <laughs> this just got real. to be real. Yeah. Yeah. it's this Dion Warwick uh, fan account I follow. Let me tell you something, Dion Warwick. She can, <laughs> but you ain't <laughs> never blow like Pay the Bell. No, never, ever. Ah, ah, but don't do that. Try Pay the Bell, okay? No, because there's a, plenty of Pay the Bell performances that she'll say Dion, circles around a, a, the universe. Or what? Dion sang that white man's music, but that yes, she did. Like, yes, she did. She sang it. If you see me. Walking down the street, he has got to cry. Walk on by. Dion sang that shit with her buck teeth. <laughs> okay? So don't you ever try my girl bad. The first black pop star, <laughs> Diana Who? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know the way to say it? Was it? And I watched that performance you was talking about with that I was Yolanda about. Adams and Diana Ross. Yeah. Wasn't that the powerful? chills that Wasn't went that through my body. That was powerful, wasn't Woo! it? Woo! Woo! I'm getting chills thinking about it. When that choir because. showed up. Woo! <laughs> and Woo! Diana felt it because she said, <laughs> yeah. And the kids kept turning. And, and the thing about it is, that's not even a gospel song. <laughs> no. Yolanda, you did that. Give her a flower. Did that, okay. Then I was watching this video, I don't know how, who thought it was a great idea, but it was. They had Carrie Underwood and Yolanda Adams singing, I think, I don't even know what they were saying, I think it was a brief, it was Aretha Franklin, You'll Never Walk Alone. Mm -hmm. Oh! Paying the bell to that. Yes, she and you know, <laughs> let me tell you, because Yolanda had a show, 
Yolanda had to show um, Carrie because she knew Carrie was getting a not getting a bucket. She thought oh, this bitch can sing. So, so Yolanda had to keep bringing that mic down uh -huh. here where you can hear her because she was go up, uh -huh. then bring it down, and uh, uh -huh. and uh, they was getting that shit. It was that was Carrie Underwood. Her and Carrie Underwood and a big ass choir. Mm. They got they they. It was amazing. You'll never walk alone. There I, is. Woo. Let me tell you something. You want to talk about Never Walk Alone? Woo! I got chills thinking about these no. performances. You want to talk about another performance I'm going to put you on? <laughs> put you on. Apollo 1986, I think it was. Is that Taylor Taylor Taylor? Taylor? You'll I Never Walk that. Alone. Yes, I see you. She that. killed that. <laughs> <laughs> Do the fuck Dion. I ain't mm. never seen Dion Warburg up on no tribute stage. <laughs> so, Other than when she was singing with Luther, Whitney, and... Uh, <laughs> Mm. Wait, sing it with when they Luther sing, Whitney. He's smiling. Yes, no, Dion. You can always count. But that wasn't here. And then just sing it. Yeah, and then uh, Luther yes. had to get Whitney together. Yes, yeah. Whitney was trying to. Well, she, 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 she did it. She <laughs> Yeah, Whitney came in and said, "Keep smiling." Yes, bitch. Those, Those were the days where they can sing, bitch. These girls ain't saying like that, and you ain't hear a crack in nobody's voice. No, <laughs> now. <laughs> It's like, how come these singers today don't sound like that? Because, no, because they don't put them in the spotlight no more. Because people still sing like that. Like, you got to find, like, that video I was talking about, Carrie Underwood mm -hmm. and Yolanda, you got to find it. Yeah, because I've never seen that. Yeah, you got to find stuff like that. They still sing, but it's not out there like that. The Soul, the soul Train. But they had the Music Awards on the other day, American Music Awards. Um, you couldn't find it. You know what I didn't talk about? Tony Braxton mm -hmm. did an amazing oh, job last week. I don't know how I forgot to bring it up. You know who did an amazing job? Now we're talking about singers. Uh, Faith, when she performed at the Soul Train Awards last year. Right. She did an amazing right. job last she, year. She, she, she and she let you know. She, yeah, she did yes. it to herself. Because she yeah. said, well, I can do this. And she was right. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> she did an amazing job. And yeah. she told you, I still got it, bitch. Yeah. She did an amazing job at the Bad Boys. Yeah, Jimmy she did. That's, right what, that's when I knew. Because I, I, I didn't know Faith could really sing like that. Yeah, she when I see her yeah. live, yeah, she killed that was it for me. Faith like, bitch, I still got it. After yeah. all these years, I still got these vocals. When it comes to vocals, like, we don't, we don't put, we don't, <coughs> you don't see Faith's name You know here. why? See, I feel like people like Faith... They don't get the opportunity to do these type of tributes where you can see their vocal range. Mm -hmm. Anytime you really see Faith is when she's singing her song. Right. But you got other singers like Yolanda Adams where you can see them singing other people's mm -hmm. songs and you see how they their range can go. But Faith, I feel like every time we see her singing, it's her song. Mm -hmm. I want to see her sing, sing. Sing somebody else's song. Like, again, who would have ever thought somebody would turn, reach out and touch somebody's hand into a gospel, a gospel song? song? That's not even a gospel song. No. <laughs> But she did it. Yeah. And with the whole choir. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you that um that that words and sounds, Jill Scott, I think if you are an R and B fan, everybody done heard that album or heard some song or that album. Good show. Yes. I can't wait because when she sing um um a long walk or you're getting in the way, like everybody gonna be ready to fight uh -huh. in there. Like it's gonna be it's just going to be a lot of fun, and I need to go. And mm -hmm. I think she's probably going to do it at the Met. Close. I oh, have, um, I have chills thinking about that album. Or the Leopold. It just, I don't want to do Leopold. Go, go to, to the Met. Met. Yeah, fancy, classy. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Go to the Met. They, yeah. they did the Met up outside the Met, didn't they? It looks really nice. Who would have thought ten years ago that that would be the Met? That that was an abandoned mm -hmm. building. Right. And it is all the signs and everything. I'm like, wow, this is nice out here. They and do, I still haven't been inside. Me neither. But I, I can't wait to get in there. But I, I, I just that album. Well, maybe you should buy some tickets to Jill's last show. You can take me, bitch. You can <laughs> take me. <laughs> well, I'll take my damn stuff. Yeah. Maybe Jill can take us. <laughs> so we, we need to work on that. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. You do that. Work on that. Yeah, work do that. On. Yeah, you work on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm yep. on that. You work right on that. Now I'm trying to figure out if I know somebody, somebody who got her information. Who do I know would have her information? Yeah, because I would love, because that album just takes me back to I was mm -hmm. like 16, and I was out there mm -hmm. <coughs> doing my thing. You better back down before you get smacked. I'm so nice. Yeah, so shout out to Jill. <laughs> so, let me so, be quiet because this is your t moment. Yeah, yeah, I posted on uh, Twitter today that I was upset with Matthew Knowles because Matthew Knowles is really trying to ride the wave of Destiny's Child. 
and I know he owns the name, but he's not releasing shit that make that makes you care about what he's doing. Like back in the day when Matthew Nail when you heard the name Matthew Knowles, you thought about his power, you thought about Destiny's mm -hmm. Child, you thought about that was the man that was running mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. And now Matthew name don't have nothing. No, anymore. it has no weight to it no more. Because he allowed the three women to become their own bosses. Mm -hmm. well, first well, of all, not, no, it's bad no, it's not a bad thing at all. But I'm just saying, once you allow that to happen, first of all, with Beyonce, mm -hmm. once you allow her to become her own boss, that was yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, but she see, just is now. You can't be, tame her now. But because Matthew is such a shade, has been a, such a shady businessman, mm -hmm. like all of the things that he was supposed to do, like he had the little record labels and stuff. He was signing all the old people from the 90s mm -hmm. and the mid-2000s. Like, none of that stuff popped off. Mm -hmm. Then we found out that he was stealing money from Beyonce. Mm -hmm. And Kelly fired him first. And then Michelle fired... No, I think Michelle fired him last. last I don't yeah. remember. But yeah, he it was... Yeah, I think he fired... I don't, I don't remember how it went down. But we were shocked that Kelly fired him. Mm -hmm. You know, it was such a big thing. But... Kelly said no more. Yeah, so... And then... The reason why they stopped putting Destiny's Child name is on there because he owns their name and he was making money and I guess they didn't want him to <coughs> make money. I don't know how how that go because I never asked them. But what I do know is that Matthew, whatever you did wrong, you should really be trying to write this because Destiny's Child, that name is 20 years old. Right. There's no reason why these women shouldn't have went on tour for 20 years or put out a 20 year album or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no there's no oomph to this when mm -hmm. it comes to what you do with Destiny Shaw versus what Beyonce might do or Kelly might do or mm -hmm. Michelle might do. Because any of them could throw them two girls on the song and everybody be talking about it. Mm -hmm. But when you do it, it's like, <coughs> right. Like, the last time we talked about you was the breast cancer thing. And I, and I hope that you're really doing better. But what I don't like is you release oh the untold story of Destiny Shadow. Oh, here's the music from them when they was girls time. It would make so much more sense if you could get all the original girls together. Except or, Farrah. Yeah, not not Farrah, yeah, not Farrah. Not, Farrah. not even like not even with Michelle when it comes to this point. Get the original girls and talk about, you know, this album and and stuff like that. Well, like why not Michelle? Because Michelle wasn't around at that time. Michelle wasn't there with Girls Time and Michelle wasn't there. Oh, you talking with about the first girl time? Yeah, right? like I, I want like if if he and if he's gonna tell this story, now this is where you bring in everybody and y'all all work together to tell the right story. Mm -hmm. Like don't go sell no story to Lifetime just so right. you can make money right. or put it on Broadway. Y'all all can make money because right. everybody put their input in. Right. And y'all all, you know how many people like do that for different plays and stories and everybody get a, a, an award for it? That's what needs to happen with this story. You are messing up the legacy of Destiny's Child by just throwing stuff out there and nobody caring about it. We care about Destiny's Child. I thought that was Child. so decent when Beyonce met up with um, Latoya and... Um, right. It's like uh, they was doing their own thing. I thought when she was on tour. I thought that was really decent. I think he needs to, uh, he needs to, I don't know how he's going to fix it, but maybe you should sell Destiny Child, sell, sell, sell Beyonce that name. Give them their name back. And, you know, you go ahead and be a father to your children and to be a husband to your wife because you are messing, I think he's messing up the legacy because it just seems like it's a cash grab every time he does something. And nobody cares how... Well, it has to be, well, in his defense, it has to be a cash grab because what is he doing other than, what is he doing? He's a professor. He's a professor, but he's not making the money that he was making when he was managing Destiny's Child. Listen. So it has to be a cash grab for him because he still has to, he still is missing that Destiny's Child money. I was making buku money when I was managing Destiny's Child and yeah, running things and over there. from the top. And yeah. scamming from the top. Now I can't, now I'm not managing none of them and I can't scam from the top no more so now I'm a professor yeah. and I'm probably making good money as a professor but I ain't making that Destiny's Child money. I wonder what he did, what happened with when he was calling <coughs> himself manager all of these new people, from, all the people from the 90s. Like, like Light Jennings. Yeah, Light Jennings. Sunshine John Harrison. B, was it? Yeah, yep, mm -hmm. John B. Like what really happened? Because he messed it up. He really, something went wrong. Mm -hmm. 
And I just don't, I don't, I really don't like to see Matthew out here like scavenging, what's the word, scavenging like that. But you know when you do wrong by people, right? there comes a time when you have to go through your 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 darkest your dark hour mm -hmm. and this right now is one of his dark hours or is his dark hour or maybe one of his dark hours you know what I mean because his kids you don't never see I'm not saying that his kids don't communicate with him because we don't know what his kids do because we're not there with them you know what I mean mm -hmm. his kids probably talk to him every day but you don't see them out publicly with him for instance I thought about this the other day Jay-Z had that that uh, charity event the dinner in, in Florida what last week or two weeks ago mm -hmm. <coughs> Whenever they have events like that, you don't ever see Matthew there with his wife. You always nope. see Miss Tina there with her husband. Because they don't mess with him. Yeah. Either they mess with him on a call you, how you doing, hey. Yeah, here goes your grandkids. Yeah, here goes your grandkids. And but I, I feel like, no, I don't, I'm, I'm keeping my mouth shut because I don't know their situation at all. Mm -hmm. Well, none of us do. Yeah, but I feel like, maybe he, he could have said I don't know, but I hope that even though they don't, he don't be in the spotlight with them, mm -hmm. I do hope that privately they do have some sort of good relationship. relationship. Right. Well, I mean, when you do, when it, when you do see pictures with him, with them, he and shows the stuff, the beans, he got to be the first. Yeah, guy. or he's, you know, because don't get me wrong, when she goes on tour, he does be there. Yeah, sometimes. So right. yeah, well, I mean, he don't be there every show, if but they're in Houston, if they, but well, I mean, you know, he's there. <laughs> <laughs> They ain't giving you free tickets. I think show. he really messed up. He knows he messed up. Yeah. He knows I, he messed up. Like, I wonder, you know what I would love to see? And they probably, this would never happen on TV. But I would love to see it. Because, and I don't want to take more. I want Tony Braxton and Beyonce to sit there and talk about their parents' relationship because they've been together for so long. Mm -hmm. Did they it's see, similar, yeah. yeah, did they see the breakdowns of the marriage? They've been there for the after part. Like, oh, yeah, I would, that would never happen, but that would be a good one. Yes, yeah. I would love to see them have a conversation. Tony would do it, but not Beyonce. Right. Yeah, not Beyonce. Because Tony is already it. in that realm of reality TV. Yeah. So, Tony, I can see her doing that. Yeah. But not Beyonce. But that would be a good matchup because they're the two oldest out of their kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would definitely be good. Yeah, I, I would love to see it. And, and how has it, like, how has it affected your marriage with your husband? I right. we know Tony divorced, right. but it would still be. I think it would, that would be excellent to see. I'm gonna have to start producing some shows because I don't know how the fuck I came up with that. Yeah, that would be good. But yes, I would like to see. <coughs> that. But yeah, so let's let's move on to Kelly Rowland. Shout out to Kelly Rowland. She had a release. She released a, a Christmas movie this weekend called Merry Little Christmas on Lifetime that I watched and I actually liked. And why did I like it? Because I'm so tired of the Christmas movies where somebody is a Scrooge or they feel like, oh, I wish I had this. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, oh, but this is your life now. And like, I hate those type of movies. But this was cute. Kelly had the family over and there's a bunch of drama going on. The kids tearing up the house. They burning shit. <coughs> like, it, was, it was ordering shit off the little... Alexa, they couldn't use I guess they couldn't use the name. But it was cute. If you get time, watch it on Lifetime. Find it on demand. Check it out. Um, I, I, and the reason, I watched the movie with Kimberly Elise and Jack A. That was one of those This Is Your Life movies. I hated it. And every time somebody would talk to Kimberly Elise, they had no idea of what the hell she was talking about for like a whole hour. And that drained the fuck out of me. Mm -hmm. And I and they, like Kimberly Lee's is such a great actress. Why would she, I love the little cheesy Christmas movie? But yeah, sometimes you need to check. Yeah, but because the big roles, the big move, the big movie roles ain't coming in, yeah. so you need to check. And Jack A was the one that was kind of like, oh, I know everything about you. I'm, mm -hmm. She was the angel in the movie. I just hated it, but I gave it a chance, you know. I, and I actually watched the whole film. Let me tell you something. Some of these actors, they. They, listen, I want this, I need this check. Yeah. I got to pay my bills this week. Yeah, and, 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 and Kelly had Debbie Morgan as her mother. Not Debbie Morgan. What's her name? Debbie, De, Debbie Morgan. I don't, I didn't see the movie. So I don't know but, who. But you know Debbie Morgan. Who's Tasha's mom on power. Oh, that's her mom? Is that I think Debbie, that's her, that name. That her name. Debbie, Debbie Morgan. I think it could be Debbie. I, I think Debbie Morgan is a wrestler. <laughs> Debbie somebody. What's her name Morgan? 
Debbie somebody. Yeah, Debbie Morgan. Debbie Morgan, yeah. <clears throat> and then she had Breesha Webb and a couple of other people. It was really it was really a cute movie. Really cute movie. I love interest. It's so weird. His face I know his face from a video game. He's in a video game and they did they do them the real time stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess that's how he made his money, like acting in other ways too. So, but he's very nice looking, and I wouldn't mind him being with Kelly in real life. But Kelly's married. And I was just child. getting ready to say, yeah, she's married. Yeah, I know. Oh, I know. His and her husband's name. He got an unproducer um, credit too. Oh, did he? Film. Yes, I'm, he did. Well, listen, Lynch, hey. Yeah. So check that's check it out, do, Kelly. Yo. Make sure the family, all everybody in the family's eating. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find out what's going on with this text message. Where is this leading to? So... Why? Because it's random? Yes. Very out the blue. Oh, wow. I might have to... I don't know. <laughs> I might have to do it. I don't know. I might have to edit this video early. But... Well, no, I'm not stopping right now. Yeah, she don't watch. Though. What? I'm talking about these text messages. No, oh, no. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, so you wouldn't have to edit it. Cause no, but watch. I'm trying to find out where is this going. Oh, why are you here? Yeah, I see what you say because sometimes I get those messages too. Like, wait, why are you texting me? So, um, Ke Kelly Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick, they were saying that the rumors were that Jay Z, you know, was upset about what went down because mm -hmm. he's the one that put this together. They're saying that Jay Z really had nothing to do with this. That's mm -hmm. this is more stories coming out that Roger Goodell, who's the head of the NFL, was the one who put together um, the teams to meet up with Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. And he was trying, he didn't tell Colin right away because he was trying to get all the teams on board. Mm -hmm. So you had about 22 teams out of the 32 teams in the NFL who were on board to go, you know, watch Colin do what he do. But then we found out that it was a whole bunch of other stuff going on and Colin changed the location and he brought media there and had cameras and he wanted to use his people. And the other teams didn't want yeah, it. only eight, yeah, well, not that they didn't want it. I don't think that they they were willing to travel to where he wanted them oh. to go because it was <coughs> sixty miles away. Okay, and only eight teams went. So even after all of this, no team has called Colin. No team after the um even after the videos we seen, I think he did a great job. He was still informed. His catcher score, his balls, like that don't sound right, but it just. So I imagine I would imagine he would do good because he's got yeah, nothing but time. Yeah, he's still working out. Yeah. So it's just it's just messed up that he still doesn't have a job. But we kind of all seen this coming. Once he defied the NFL, mm -hmm. like, it's like, I, I want him to have a job. I wonder how much Nike paid him for that endorsement that he was doing with them. Too much. And they better give him a bonus because when that commercial came out, their stock went up. Mm -hmm. Risk, what did it say? Risk, sacrifice? I forgot what it was saying. But... Whatever that thing was, they used to put bend, it everywhere. Bend over and risk it all. You <laughs> Stand up or you'll fall for anything kind of campaign. Sit down and you'll get anything. Yeah, so, you know, I want him, I want him to have a job, but Colin, maybe, maybe you can maybe join another league like the CFL in Canada or something, or you what can coach. NBA? You trying it? <laughs> Oh, I'm waiting for the first the first trans player to enter the NBA or the WNBA. That's his headline that hasn't happened yet. But oh, I could just see the negative headlines coming out about this if, when it happens. Because it's not if, it's when, when it happens. Mm -hmm. And our last story is um, Chicago Superintendent Eddie Johnson has been terminated from his job weeks before he was set to retire. Mm. So if you terminated, you can't get your pension? No, because you're fired. No. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no. Ooh, Mr. Johnson. That's why Whistle didn't quit before he got could get yeah. fired. What's the point here? Where? It's best to get it's best to, to quit. Get, quit before you <laughs> get fired. Especially if you know that what he should have did. <laughs> What he should have did was mm -hmm. when they started all that questioning, you know what, I'm saying my resignation. Right. <laughs> but he said, no, let them investigate me. I'm open to them investigating me. That's, and see, that's where you get that, I'm that, no. Because mm -hmm. if they're investigating you, that means that they are on to something. Mm -hmm. Or they've been ticked off about something. If you were getting ready to retire anyway, reti Reti retire re now. resign. Just resign. The right. hell? Yeah. Just in case anything comes out, man. 
the the new mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot. As far as I know, you don't get your pension when you get fired. Get fired. You might could fight for it though, right? You, I'm not for sure, Kevin, but I don't know. Because I'm just like, yeah, I'm about to Google that. Yeah, Google that part. So the mayor of Chicago, Lori Lightfoot, she basically, you know, was saying that he lied to her. She gave him multiple times to tell her the truth. He didn't tell her the truth. And they had video evidence. Okay. That he so, wasn't telling the truth. So this says hold hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, hold on, because I gotta Keep talking. Yeah, she, and she said she really didn't go into details about what he lied about or what was in the video because he's married and he has a family and she didn't want to, you know, expose that. Okay, so this says once a person is vested, meaning secured in their pension plan, he or she has the right to keep it. So if you're fired after you've become vested in the plan, you wouldn't lose your pension. It's also possible to be partially vested in a plan, which would mean that you could keep the portion that has vested even if you're fired. So I'm almost certain that somebody of his stature, yeah, he's he, would be vested, since he would be vested in it. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah. So, Because I remember they fired that guy, <laughs> Andrew McKay, before he could get his pension. Yeah. And what job was that for? Um, he was working for the FBI or something like that. It just FBI all, it, and I remember that was a big thing too. So I guess right. it all depends on, you know, what what you have what your stake is I guess in it or whatever yeah because he didn't he didn't fully hit twenty years with the government right it was like right before right so then yeah because this guy right here has been yeah for thirty been, something years yeah thirty years thirty years oh but then he's yeah so he he maybe he will, he'll walk yeah. away with so maybe budget. he could walk away but see th this is the thing but now. I still would have resigned because yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to be fired I would have rather no, resigned same. yeah because because you arguing with Trump this this done this done help Trump now. Then you got to think with Justice Smollett, mm -hmm. when you get on camera and you said your thing that he lied. And he did. Yeah, and, and now it make you look like, damn, like, you came at Justice for lying, and, and you're doing, the same, doing thing. the same thing. Right. And you're supposed to be the head of 13,000 police officers in Chicago. Like, it's just a mess. Mm -hmm. It's a whole mess. <clears throat> and he got what he deserved. He got fired for lying. He could have just told the truth about what happened that night when he was out drinking. Like, you shouldn't be drinking and driving. Come on, man. Let me tell y'all something. All of y'all celebrities, all if you are someone in power or have a great deal, you know, or command, a captain, what is wrong with taking an Uber somewhere or getting a driver? You can drink all you want, do all you want. But you don't have to be behind the wheel of that car. It could be somebody else. Mm -hmm. Come on, you got to learn. Because people in that mindset, oh, I ain't going to get that drunk and then end up getting that drunk. Yeah, because even the police captain, you thought that no one was above you and you got fired from the mayor. You know, someone was above you. You're not above the law. And everybody needs to understand that. Mm -hmm. And if this president thinks he's above the law, I want y'all to do something for me. If you're not registered to vote, register. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have to keep saying this, but we're going to have to. Right instead of, I'm going to just put a little thing in the video, beginning of the video, right to the vote. Yeah. Because 2020 is very important. 2020 is here. Yeah. Because this is already December. <laughs> this came out fast. That's a dead thing. I remember, I remember this house in woo, Yes. I, was, I remember when Trump won, I was so upset. <laughs> you. I called out of work the next day. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I was so up, upset. First of all, I went to bed upset because it he hadn't even come in yet. Yeah. So I said, but... It, when I went to bed, he was winning. So I'm like, oh, God, this ain't going to end good. So I said, Lord, before I went to see, I said, Lord, please let this turn around. And I'm thinking it's going to turn around. When I woke up and said he won, I said, oh, I'm calling right on now. I'm not going to work today. I was so I'm not going to work today. I was so upset. Woo! I didn't go to work on inauguration either. I said, well, I don't work on inauguration anyway. I, I always call. I was up that whole night. I, I never went to see <coughs> I remember coming downstairs and Jeremy had cleaned up the downstairs and had that front window open. All the way up, and I was so mad because it was, it was cold. so cold. Yeah, like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, you know always doing something, yeah. And then everybody was talking about it in the store, you know, getting their cup of coffee. How they couldn't believe it. But I'm like, y'all don't even be voting. That's what I want to say. Vote. Yeah, y'all vote any fucking way. Yeah, it's always the ones who don't. They always got something to say. Right. They don't get out and vote. <laughs> I can't stand. I can't. 
and always want something, <laughs> always complain. Well, thank y'all for what? <laughs> it's not funny. They always want, they always complain. Yeah. They don't want, but then, then when all you gotta do is go and just, it takes about a few minutes to vote. Right. Now with the new machines, it's gonna take you a while to get used to them. But they don't know because they don't go any yeah, farther. But, but, but they, <laughs> they do. With the, the new machine, what I like is you can see what you voted for at before you send it through to go mm -hmm. through. You can check it. Check it to make sure it's correct. Because right. once you push vote, it just goes. Right. Yep. The paper comes down. So you got, I like this paper ballot there. You ain't got to worry about, what well, is it got a chip in it? Did, did they poke the hole? No. They got everybody who voted. is right. It's all right there for you on the paper. Okay. And you vote in the in the it's like first of all you push it up, you vote for who you want for, then it comes down and you check it and then you hit vote and it slides back up and it goes to where the votes go. Mm. So it's that That's like take a little long though. Yeah, yeah, for for somebody once you Especially the for first like a time, senior or something. Yeah. They'll be taking a little Yeah, long and it's more. bad because you don't want them to be in there by themselves. Right. But they need <coughs> what they what I think they should do. Is talk to the people in the neighborhood and mm -hmm. do like samples. Have them come out, mm -hmm. or maybe get a bus for some people, and show them this is how you use a community. What you call it? A community um, thing, and show them how to do it. But they don't really. They really don't want people coming out to vote. Y'all know that, right? right. They don't want y'all to be voting. So y'all need to vote. All right, we gotta go. Yeah, cause I gotta pee real bad. Make sure you pee in the toilet this time. Where I pee at last time? Last time you pee all over food. I'm, I'm not. Did I pee in that bed for me? No. No. I'm about to say. say. I'm about to say. I did not. I'm about to say. Because uh, if I did in this one, I can't see you. Yeah. Yeah. Don't try me. No, you just try me, bitch. I'm going to say, wait a minute.